in the zoo. But they they should quiet down in a second. Party. <laughs> They're totally quiet. <laughs> and since the last time I did this, we have a new dog. And he's bigger and louder. All right. I think okay, we're good and live. So <laughs> Um, and I'll keep an eye on the waiting room and let people in as they join, but people okay. are also welcome to join on Facebook. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So hello and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for our NAMI Walks Creativity Connects Paint and Sip with Miriam Hughes. My name is Danielle Fletcher, and I am the Communications and Outreach Coordinator for NAMI Maryland and this year's Walk Manager. If you have any questions or tech issues, feel free to message us in the chat. Um, and we can troubleshoot for you. Uh, special thanks to our NAMI Walks national sponsors, Takeda, Lundbeck, Humana, and Alchemies, and to our local gold sponsors, Neurocreen Biosciences, Whiting Turner Contracting, Otsuka, the University of Maryland Medical System, and Optum Maryland. And now without further ado, Miriam, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi. Hello everyone, I'm Miriam Hughes, and um, I'm an artist, obviously, hopefully. And um, just a little little tip, um, you're, you're gonna see two pictures of me. Well, one's of me and one's of the artwork. And the one that says artwork, if you'd like, if you double tap on that, you can pin it and then that'll be the bigger page. So when I'm done talking or even while I'm talking, just pin that, that way you can see better what I'm working on. Um, does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, okay, well, welcome. Um, I'm actually, I've been, an, I've been an artist my whole life, mostly medical illustrator, and I've been doing, working as an instructor and a fine artist for the last 10 years. And I started last year, during COVID, I started doing these online classes. And I wasn't sure it was going to work out, but it did. And it's, it's so much fun because I'm reaching people all over the country. And what we're going to do today is um, I'm going to show you a real simple way to draw some flowers. And I might even throw a chicken in there, my kind of chicken. But we're, the one thing that you're not going to need is a pencil. Keep that in mind. So um, we're going to start by painting our image. And I'll let you see an image. You can look at this image or whatever image I decide to choose as your sample if you want. But I'll do it quickly first so you get an idea of how it works. And um, before I go there, I'm going to go talk a little bit about supplies. How many of you can just sort of like put a hands up or something. How many of you um, painted at all? Any? A little bit? Okay, good. Um, even if you haven't, that's actually no problem at all. But, and that's what I like about this is I, I've been teaching a lot of people who've never painted before, all adults, but also some very good painters. And quite a few of them actually end up selling their work and being in galleries that I don't even try to get into. So it's kind of exciting. So um, what I'm gonna use today, I'm using a hundred and 10 pound, I think, watercolor paper. Usually I work with 140, but I had these pieces already cut. And I like using, it's Arches Watercolor Paper Cold Press. And if anyone wants, I can send a list of everything I use. What I like about the cold press is it has a little bit of a tooth to it. So it gives you some, some variety in your painting. And then, um, so we're gonna use Arches paper. The reason I like to use good paper, and you can use anything, but you'll find there's a huge difference. This is on 140 pound. The reason I like to use a good paper is that it makes your paintings actually work so much better than, you know, not. Now, I'm also gonna use, I'm gonna move these for a minute. So here's the paper. And I also hand tear my paper. The reason I tear my paper is so that you can just sort of set it on top of a mat and not have to worry about fancy matting and framing because framing itself is expensive. That's just a little trick I teach everybody. Um, although I don't always do that. Okay. What we're gonna to do today is I'm probably gonna use these paints. I got this set from Michaels for $5. It's usually at the end, end, um, end cap. And if you go right online, it's $6.99 or something. But if you get it in the store, it's $5. And they're really nice paints. Um, as a professional watercolorist, I also use these paints. This is $400. So you can see I'm not fussy, I'll go the full range. And I sometimes even mix them depending on the color, not a lot, but um, I may use these just because there's some colors in here I like. And then another good quality paint 
This is Daniel Smith. It comes in tubes. And the thing about tube paint, which is good for my tubes, is um, you can let, like here, this is from a previous class. You can let um, your paints dry and then just reactivate them with water. So, um, and I may, I may pour out some paint in the tube, but I just want to show you the difference. So if there are any questions about paint, just know there's a full variety. If you already start to get, if you want to get interested in painting, I would recommend that you spend the money on your paper and on some nice paints. Although this 599 one has certainly carried me through many years too. So you don't need to spend $400 like I do. Um, but I only do that after I've had a good summer of, of working, you know. <laughs> I did just order another set for 120. Okay, I'm just putting these back. All right, and the other thing too is brushes. Now, I like to encourage people to use this is called a number 12, Simply Simmons round, round brush. This one's got a little bit, a little bit of use. And the reason, and it seems, it might seem like it's kind of big. The reason I like to use this is what happens is a lot of people start drawing, like they'll take a paintbrush. Let's say I'm gonna have a smaller one here. And they'll start drawing with the brush. And, and you kind of like kill the joy of painting because you're trying, you're trying to make the watercolors do something that they're not supposed to be doing. Because there's ways to get detail by layering and uh, all this other stuff. Um, but um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right off. Um, are there any questions so far? Everyone okay? No questions? All right. Um, I'm going to start right off. I'm going to do a painting and then I'll talk about what I did as I'm doing it, but also afterwards. And then I'm going to have all of you do one and we're going to share our work and um, Oh, and I'd like to, I'd like to encourage you if you can, even though there's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine times four is what? 24? No? Mm -hmm. Huh? 36, 36. Thank you, 36, I knew it was something. <laughs> <But> <laughs> anyway, you don't need to use all 36 colors. A lot of times when I teach my watercolor classes, I try to have people just use three colors so that they can learn how to use, the, if you do get expensive paints, you can use the best quality paint and learn how to mix it. And after I teach them that, then I say, go crazy and get whatever you want. But it's good to know that in that class, I call um, jokingly my deserted island school of art. So if you're on a deserted island and you only have three tubes of paint, you still can be successful. And a brush. Okay, so the other thing I have next to me, is paper towel and a piece of scrap paper. And the reason I have the scrap paper is so you can test your colors. And you'll see as I go, as I paint, I'll try to make sure everything's kind of in the same area so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to go and I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reproduce this painting somewhat. And these are uh, theoretically daffodils. <clears throat> so we'll see what happens. So the first thing is I get my brush wet and I just dip it in the water and, and get it kind of wet, but you don't want it sopping. And then, you kind of, and then I, I just sort of wipe it off on the edge of my, my paint bin here. Like, so I put it in here and then I just wipe it off. So it's not sopping wet, but it's um, not, not real crispy dry either. And I'm gonna go right into, the, um, into my paint, into the orange color. And, and if you notice, there's no drawing here at all. Sorry, my sound effects are. Um, and you want to, when you're thinking about composition, you want to work in odd numbers. I can't remember why, but apparently that's good composition. I, you know, I should remember what. All right, I'm I'm breaking my rules almost immediately about only using three colors. Sorry. Um, so this is sort of the daffodil inside, I'm gonna make that one facing that way. And if you notice, it might be hard to see, but what I'm trying to do is use, um, I'm rather than pointing down like my brush like that, I'm using the side of it. And I'm dragging it a little bit. So some of my colors are gonna mix. Go here. And I also wanna leave some white spaces. And by that, you'll see what I mean. Um, it's so hard to see with this yellow. I have to go a little deeper. I'll go deeper on the next one. You see, I'm sort of just dragging my brush. And I'm going to let some colors run. I don't want to fill the whole flower up. I'm, I'm dragging it and I want to leave 
some white spaces. And by white, and this one you can see better. See the white areas in here, some of these white areas? They're really important for our final result. Um, okay, here. Oopsie days, that's too orangey. Maybe a lot more yellow. Okay. This a little bit more. Round it off a little bit. Um, I always make up names for my, my floral paintings so that I don't get called out by some botanist, you know, for being incorrect. I'm going to make this a little bit redder. So I just dab, while it's still wet, I'm just dabbing some, some more red paint right on top. And now leaves. And it's still wet, as you can see. Um, and again, I haven't drawn anything. And this seems like it could be really scary, but trust me, it's really fun to do it this way. So now I'm gonna kind of go like that. And see, and again, see how it's sort of, the lines are sort of raggedy. Um, I like that aspect of it. Okay, so it's clear. No, I don't like that leaf, but that's okay. Um, yes. Now the first the first one I put down was just a green, and now I'm adding some blue to that. I'm going to go ahead and throw a little bit of color, and I don't know why I did that, but I'm going to do it anyway. Down here, just to let it bleed a bit. Um, the thing that's nice about this too is I very rarely do I consider anything I do a mistake, except for like this right here. <laughs> um, I think I want this, I want this. Um, oh, I'm gonna show you something pretty cool. Okay, so this is gonna come up through here, up like that. And then kind of, I might have another one come like that. Okay. This one right here, I don't normally show people this, but this is good to see. Um, I'm not crazy about part of this, so watch this. I'm going to get it wet several times, clean off my brush. You want to make sure you're working with pretty clean water when you do this. And voila! I removed it. So one of the things that people think about watercolor is that it's unforgiving and you can't fix mistakes. And I just didn't like the direction that that one took. It just it was throwing me off. And now I can just add a little bit more. I'll wait till it dries totally and I'll add some more to it. Okay, that's it. The next step is you let it dry. So you're probably gonna be working on at least two paintings because I forgot to bring my blow dryer in here. I'll turn my heater on for a minute. Um, so the next thing is um, the pen and ink part. So see how I did this with absolutely no drawing? The pen and ink part, and this one, I, this is one I, I haven't finished yet. So I did this painting. And then what I do is I take my pen and I, and it's, I don't know what, if you guys bought supplies or not, but this is, this is basically a laundry pen and it has a thick point and a thin point. And I always use a thin point. And the reason I like this as opposed to some felt tip pens is that the, the tip of this pen is um, vinyl. So the ink kind of flows out through it and it doesn't, it doesn't catch on your paper and it doesn't dry out. It's, it's for the, especially for watercolor paper, it's a much um, sturdier image kind of pen to use. That being said, I use all the other kinds of pens too. So now what I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna outline my image and that's what it might seem like. But I'm going to do what I call, I can't think of a better, another word. I'm going to do something called inlining. So the first thing I do is I look for my white areas like for, or my different values. So like for right up here in this rose, it's um, I'm just going to kind of like highlight or inline that. And then I'm going to go to the white area. And I don't use, a, I mean, I, I like to do a little bit of a ragged looking line because it's, um, it looks more natural. But that's just that's just my style. So see how I'm like, I'm kind of going on the inside of this image, and then here again, another different value change and some whites. Um, and I make up some lines too. So I'm sort of going on the inside of the image, 
first before I go outside. Um, so for example, over here too, let's see if I can see that. And now I can kind of go to the outside, but I start throwing in some little extra lines and um, even some extra white spaces if they're not there yet. There's a little white space there. And, and it gives it, it brings it together. So you can have whatever fantasy flower you want. Now, I don't always connect the lines like I'm doing right now, but, but in this particular um, painting, I decided to do something different. So see in, the, in some of the bigger white spaces, I put polka dots. If you look at more of my work um, online or in other places, there seems to be a fascination with polka dots. And it's really funny, this, I don't know if I share this or not, but years and years ago, I went to see a therapist for some odd reason or another. And I mentioned how I really like a lot of color and I like texture and polka dots. And she goes, well, usually people who like polka dots and color, wild colors like that tend to be mentally ill. I thought, really? Hmm. I never went back to her, <laughs> but, but, she's, but I do like polka dots and colors. So don't let that, now see in this, I don't know if you can see this or not, but in here, there's even some other value changes. So darker red and lighter red. So I'm even going to take, I forgot to turn the light on. Maybe that'll help a little. Let's see here. Um, I don't know if that helps or not, but so I even kind of like well, inline those different value changes. And again, I tend to really go overboard. My previous career was as a medical illustrator. So I used to like a lot of detail. Um, and then, so that's sort of how I handled the rose or tulip, tulip, these are tulips. Um, let's see here. Now here's an example of just out of just doing an outline. An outline to me would just be like kind of going down like that drawing a straight line, finishing it. And that's fine, but I, th I think, I just feel like you've got so much character comes through if you just sort of start from the inside and doo -doo 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 -doo, go like that. Um, it gives it depth without you needing to add more color, which is another way you can do it, but this is just a quick and easy way. This is a really fun way to get used to painting and being successful and um, having good results. And, and people, I'm not kidding, a lot of my students sell this work and go, hmm, hmm, hmm. I do too, so anyway. So what I'd like for everyone to do right now, how many of you are gonna, start, are gonna paint actually while we're here? If you wanna go ahead and start and ask any questions, um, I'm gonna continue working on this one while this other one, oopsie, while this other one dries. So remember what this looks like, because it looks sort of boring right now, right? Kind of plain. Wait till you see it when we're done. And it is a little messy up here, and I'll show you how in more ways I work with messes. Um, so any questions at this point? No? Anna? No? Okay. Okay, chatting, any chatting? <laughs> like that. I don't know what happened to the dogs. They got quiet again. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My orange has lines on the border. They don't, let's see, what's that? Let me just see your um, chat. My orange, they don't look smooth. Um, who is that? Can you, let's see, can you unmute yourself so I can see you? From Rita, oh no. Who is that, uh, Watchman? Where are you? I'm trying to find you. There you are, okay, oh. I'm gonna pin you so I can see you better. Nope, I don't wanna chat that, okay. Um, your orange looks red. That's actually fine. You don't, it doesn't need to be, the less, um, smooth the better off you are so don't worry about that does that answer your question <laughs> you can go yes or no or and yes okay good this one's almost dry i mean if you look at look at this one here it's it's really if you if you saw this particular painting before it's really pretty raggedy a lot of open space and it really came together and particularly look at the bottle how I was able to show the reflection without thinking about it. 
And I, I hate to say I didn't think about it. I probably think about it intuitively, but you know what I mean. Um, this is almost dry. Okay. One of the things, so one of the things I also want to show on this one is, and I'm going to do the same thing with this other one too. Oh, I'm going to do it with this one. While you're painting, I'm just going to, sometimes, you know, once I'm done with my painting and it just looks kind of, eh, you know, now what am I going to do? I'd like to put a border around it, but I don't always want my border, like in this case, it goes, oh, you'll see this. So the way I do my border, and I do it freehand, believe it or not, so hopefully I don't screw this up, is I'll pick a point to start. And in this case, I'm going to start here, but I'm going to end there. So I'm going to start here, draw my line. I'm going to come up here, take a break. Come through here. You see how this sort of frames your artwork. I think I'm going to go a little further out and down down like that. And it's just a little technique, it's a little graphic technique to kind of give your, your artwork, it, all of a sudden your composition is placed somewhere and it's coming in or out of something. And it, it makes such a big difference to um, do that. I don't like doing like, for example, I don't know if I have anything here. Let's say for example, this was the flower here. I don't like to do this. Because it just it doesn't it doesn't tell the same sort of story. This has a little bit more of a mystery too, like where did it come from, and where where's it sitting? And then sometimes when I'm feeling really courageous, I might even go. I'm gonna make this wide too. You can use a ruler if you want. But when I'm doing these these particular um, paintings, my goal is for it to look as um, kind of as free form and as loose as I possibly can. Doo -doo -doo. There. Voila, like that. And if I want to get really courageous, I think what I'm going to do, let's see, what's a um, complimentary color? This is something I teach in other classes. Um, hang on a Sometimes if you're trying to decide what color you want, like I want to put something in that border besides polka dots. So orange and green, I look at my color wheel. And this is a little bit faded looking here, but so my oranges, so the complementary color, which means the color that's going to help enhance or complement your composition would be in, let's see if it's orange, probably in the blue family. That makes sense? Just go right across the, the color wheel. So I am going to take, I have this really pretty blue. And in this case, I am going to use a little bit of a smaller brush. And I'm going to take, um, where's that? Where's my test paper. Test out the color, make sure it's the right one. Nope, that's not the right one. Um, where is that blue? Let me get this one. That's not it. I'm going to take this sort of this blue and just fill this in. And this is something I don't do that often, but each of these little steps that I've done makes such a difference in, in kind of completing your composition. Um, notice I moved my paint, my. Uh, I'm also, if you notice, I have not paint, I have not taped down my paper. In watercolor, people think, oh, do I soak my paper first or do I tape it down? If I'm going to use a lot of wet on wet, I'll tape it down. And wet on me, wet means like I've gotten my whole piece of paper really wet first. And in this case, I'm working more like with a wet brush, but on dry paper. And those are other things that I can, you know, if you're interested, I can tell you more about later. Um, 
this is it's funny. I've, and then um, I also um, the reason people, if you, if those of you who have done watercolor and you think, oh, shouldn't I like, as you hear the word size my paper or get it all wet, sizing your paper is something. Um, it softens your paper. So when you are working wet on wet, it gives you a different kind of um, surface to work with. Um, but the reason people also did sizing was because papers used to be made with horse glue and, and other kinds of substrates. So um, you want to get rid of that before um, you um, actually painted on it. So it's interesting. It's kind of like that story about, you know, the, the young woman who cut the ends off of her ham and her husband said, why do you cut them off every time you cook a ham? And she goes, well, because my grandmother did. And so they asked the grandmother and she said, well, that's because the pan was too small. There were, you know, so sometimes in watercolor, there's a lot of um, reasons or theories about how you should do this or that. And some of them are, you know, based on how the, how the materials were made or the constraints of what people had before. So it's always good to kind of like challenge, challenge some of the uh, misconceptions you have. This, this blue is looking a little, I wonder if I went, oh, I went in the wrong one. Ha 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 Okay, I went into the wrong blue. I was using a little more green. So I'll give a sort of an ombre effect here. Um, and while it's still wet, you can get some pretty nice effects of mixing. You can also do that after it dries too. We'll talk about that later. Um, I think the thing I want people, to, if, if you get nothing else out of this, is just to remember how versatile and forgiving, unlike its reputation, watercolor can be. And it's just a matter of having the, like that one piece, we'll go back to the other piece, how that one piece where I just went um, and I can remove it. And there's actually some really nice little tools and tricks for removing things. Um, including you can even use a Mr. Queen magic sponge. You just wanna make sure you do it carefully and um, you don't damage the surface of the paper because then that way it, um, then the watercolors won't sit on the paper and things start staining and that's when it goes bad. Another little trick about watercolor is to remember a lot of times people say, well, my colors always end up being muddy. One of the reasons your colors end up being muddy is that uh, learning how to mix is important. But watercolors is a transparent medium. And um, some of the colors, you'll see them, you know, when you go to the store or anything, they're called cadmium red, cadmium yellow, the cadmium, so cadmium is a mineral. And it, it makes your colors, look at that, I think that, that's kind of nice. I've never done that before, I like that. I mean, I've done the lines, but I've never actually colored them in. But I think it looks nice. Um, the cadmium, so, so when you mix your cadmiums, with other colors, it makes things muddy. So I tend to avoid using the cadmium colors as a general rule simply because of that. And it makes it easier. Okay, now here's the one I was working on. Any questions so far? No? No, here's two. Let's see here. Check. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay. Uh, sorry, just checking messages. Um, inking part. Now, can you see, can you see the ragged? And I think it was, who was it was talking about? Is it Rita? We're talking about her ragged lines on the orange. See how raggedy these lines look? I don't know if I'm gonna put up really close. See how rough they look? And that's, you know, the nature of the paper also. I like that look. This only, this one, I've only used three colors. I could have added some other colors in here. Um, I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to anyway. But let me see on the stems. I just want a little bit more, a little darker. And again, I'm going with, um, I want to make it darker, but I'm not adding a darker, um, I'm not, I'm not adding a darker green. What I'm doing again, I'm going across my color wheel. So it was green. So I'm going to the reds and purples to make it, to make it. Um, and that's just a really cool way to work with color. Remember to work with color is that Sometimes when you want to make things darker, your eye will do that. Will finish the story for you, and um, the, the visual story. So um, even here, I'm going to go a little bit down there. Just add some more. Right here. Down some more. Oh, this. This one I really. I'm 
I'm going to go back to some green for this one. Let the green and the same thing here. There. Okay. So see how I've given it more depth, and I didn't add that depth by adding more green. I did it by adding purple. Or I'm going to go. The true complement would have been a red. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some red in there too, just to sort of give you an idea of how it, how it really makes such a big difference if you just um basically you kind of have to get out of your way of your preconceived thinking or as i in a lot of my classes i tell people the best thing to do when you're painting and drawing is sometimes just leave your brain out of it um that's it's a much longer discussion but trust me it does work all right now how do i make this look like this from sort of a blah, boring looking painting. And I'm gonna avoid the leaves right now because it's still wet. But the very first thing I'm gonna do is with my pen, I'm gonna kind of go in the white areas again, just kind of highlight them, some little white areas. And I know the daffodils have sort of a shape, you know, there's sort of a cup shape here and a ruffle, but I'm not gonna go with that. I'm just sort of go with the images, uh, the, the lines as I see them and um, and you, the, the viewer's eye will kind of make up a lot of that for them. They'll go, oh, that's a daffodil. They won't think, oh, she forgot this or that. So they'll, they'll get the idea. I guess you could say it's mildly abstract. Okay, here I'm getting a little bit too much outlining. So I wanna go inside a little bit. Here's some more white areas. I'm gonna kind of inline that and see these little tiny, spots of extra color. I always take advantage of those too. And what's this right here? Whoops, easy. Cool. Um, and the, the, my, my edges, Rita, like you were saying, my edges are kind of rough. That's okay, I'm using them anyway. Um, rough, rough, rough. I'm tempted to do something, but I'll do it later. Um, rough. So see, I'm pulling in, I'm pulling in some areas too. I'm just sort of making up some lines. So basically I'm doing my drawing afterwards, but I'm not drawing an exact flower. I'm just sort of following what, what's there and creating sort of an intuitive little image. I don't know if intuitive is the right word. Um, this is uh, sometimes like, I'll do like 10 of these in one day. I'll do all the paintings really fast. And then the, it's just a very relaxing way to just sort of be. Um, Miriam, Rita's asking, uh, is that a permanent marker? Can you explain what the marker yes. is that you're using again? Yeah, this is, Rita, this is called an identipen. Let me see if you can see that properly. Identipen. And it is a permanent indelible ink, so it doesn't run with water. And it's basically a laundry pen. You can get it on, I buy them 10 at a time on Amazon. It's cheaper, but you can get them at art supply stores or even um, staples. And what I like about it is that it has one very sharp point, which is what I use, and it doesn't um, catch on the paper. And then the other side is a thicker point, and this is more of a felt tip point. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a, um, a darker black line for this one, just to show you the difference in the lines. So for example, I'm gonna go here. To see, I don't know if you can see the, this line next to the um, the other line, the different how thin and thick they are. And I'll do I'll do another little drawing just to um. And I'm gonna take this down right about here. And as long as I'm at it, now that I've been getting fancy again, let's see here. Here, 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 here. The reason I don't like to use a thick side as often is because I feel, especially with the outlining part, 
I feel like it gives it too much of a, a cartoony or a Peter Max look. Peter Max, if anyone knows, is an artist um, from the 60s, 70s. Not that I was alive then. I was, but anyway. <laughs> so, um, so here, let me see if I can show you. Um, I'll show you on the back of this on the back of this piece of paper. Here's the one side of the pen. And this is the other side. To see the difference in the line. And that's what I like about this, this particular pen is because it's so versatile. You can use both sides. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go even a little crazier. And I didn't even finish this part, but where's my my oh there it is. Um it's already kept okay. I'm going to go ahead. And these are just the kind of things you can do. I don't know, this might be a little bit heavy handed, this, this dark line in polka dots for the delicate flower. Um, but like I said, sometimes I recommend you don't use your brain and think things through. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But this will work in somebody's eye. There, there's one more here and one here. And see, so it just it gives it. Now I'm still not done with the flower part yet. You always make sure you, you recap your pen so you don't they don't dry out. Um, and again, it's like this, you know, the flowers, I'm not, it does not look like in your mind, if you, if you think it's too, uh, too a daffodil doesn't look like that. But the viewers can look at this and I think the first thing they'll think is like, and you could even add like a little cup, I don't know, sometimes I think that makes it too trite. Like I just added that little cuppy looking part to it, a little bit of a, yeah, I don't like that, but that's okay. Um, you could make it more realistic looking if you wanted. See, now I've got to figure out what to do with that, but I'm going to ignore it. Um, and then the same thing with, with the, um, the leaves or the stems. I'm not going to draw a straight line. I'm going to go with every little rough part that it has and just like highlight those. Rough, 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 rough. Do -do 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 -do. And I may want to come back later and add some more lines, but I always do, I do this part first, just to sort of get the idea. Um, has anyone, how's everyone doing? Has anyone um, created anything yet they want to show off? I can show you mine. Sure, who's that? This is Paula. Okay, Paula, let me see. Ooh, ooh, I'm still trying to pin, pin this. Let's see here. I'm trying to pin things. Okay, let's see, Paula. I can't look. pin you. I was having trouble pinning. I know. You. I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble pinning also. Oh, maybe I have to remove my pin. Let's see. Okay, no. Hmm. I couldn't that's, pin, but yeah. I can. But I can focus on. That's good. But I do like that, Paula. That's very nice. I like that little leaf hanging off on the. Would that be the right hand side? Over and here. I like yeah, and I like how you painted the border too. That's very nice. Yeah, I didn't draw the border. I just painted yeah. it. Yeah, I've done that a few times. Like this one, I painted the border. Yeah. And um, it, it's just each time you do it, it, it offers a different look. I like that. Thank Paula, you. Do, do you paint in general? I paint um, at home a, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't, but I always draw first. So this was fun. I know, isn't it? It's kind of exciting to know that you can, you don't have to draw. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people say, well, I can't, I'm not creative. I can't do anything. And well, guess what? <laughs> you can't. Anyone else want to show off anything? Oh, look at that. Oh, Mary and Anna. Oh, I like these. And Lena. Oh, look at oh, these. Oh, wait, I can't see there. Let's see. I can. Oh, wow. Lena. Is it Lena? Yeah, Lena. And then, yes. Um, that, that's what, that's very nice. I like that. One, two, three, four. You probably need a fifth flower in there to kind of create on, um, you know, the no awesome count. Way. Anna, I want to yeah. see yours again. Anna, can you put yours up again? Oh, I like that. They always, I, 
Are they little blue flowers? It's hard to see the color. I do like that though. I like the simplicity of them. They have like earth colors. Um, yeah. So it's like a, uh, let's see, Naples yellow was the uh, flowers. And then what other color do I have here? Venetian red. Ooh. Hunter. And what's your green? Um, the green is a sap green. Okay. Now you know how they say in interior decorating you should um you should have one color that carries through the theme of each room. So let's say if you use like a turquoise blue and I mean I don't I don't always su suggest this, but a lot of times I like to make sure I've mixed a little bit of whatever color is in the flower or in the stem. It repeats somewhere, even just a little tiny bit in other parts. And it kind of helps connect the artwork. So you could like have a little bit of the sap green in some of your flowers, just maybe near the, the bottom of the stem um, and some of the Venetian red. I would use some of that in the stem also to get, to, to get them darker. Yeah. 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 Um, well, thank you. And um, Mary, let me see yours again. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah, I like that. Now, is that on a sketch pad, Mary? Yeah, a sketch pad, uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah. it's funny, you'll find that the quality of the paper on a sketch pad is different than watercolor paper. So if you were interested in pursuing that, get some good watercolor paper, too. Yeah, this is called mixed media. Yeah, is it is Strathmore mixed media? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah. a good pad. I like that. I use those a lot. Uh -huh. Uh-huh. What is and the I, name of the pen you're using? It's called an Identa pen. Identa? Yeah. I-D-E-N-T-I. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it's a T-M and then pen, P-E-N. Okay. And you can look, it's made by uh, Sakuru, S-A-K-U-R-I, or Sa okay. Sakuru. Okay. I need, I need my other glasses. Um, it's a great, great pen. And it's, it's so versatile and it just, um, like I said, it's got two sides. So, um, and I use the thin side so much. The bad part about this pen is I think the ink is divided in the middle. So when mm -hmm. you run out of the ink on the thin side, it doesn't just transfer over. Mm -hmm. So I, I have to, I donate my, the ones that don't have the thin side working anymore. But um, good, good job. I, I commend you on your courage working that size too. That's good. A lot of times yeah. my students always make their work too small. <laughs> so it's like, although I did just start doing some paintings. I, just, I don't have them with me. I just dropped them off in the framer, but I had some paintings that, um, and I pre-measured all my paper. I don't know if you can see, but two inches square uh -huh. and I'm doing landscapes in them. I don't know why. I thought maybe hmm. just to, just to challenge myself. Nice. Um, let's see. Anyone else want to show anything? Let's see. Let's get some. Da, da, da. Just watching, okay. What's the name of the pen? Pause of wonderful. I done a pen. Ooh, da, Donna. Oh, Donna, look at that. Oh, and I like your grass too. Nice, nice. Do you, uh, how do you feel about it, Donna? Can you un can she unmute herself? I'm unmuting. Okay. okay. How do I feel about it? I, you know, I um I had fun with the with the colors, I'm having less fun with the ink lines. And what do you think is causing that? You, it looks like you're doing a little bit more outlining than you should be. That that might be the case. Yeah, that yeah. As soon as, I guess as soon as I pick up a marker, I'm suddenly, you know, putting Crayon. edges on instead of being creative. With the paintbrush, it was easy to, to let loose. it flow. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just, it's just a matter of like trying to let yourself loose because I like it, but it does, you can tell you kind of outline like, like the one top daffodil up on the um, upper right hand side. Right. That you can still go back inside where there's some what looks like lighter or white areas and just sort of outline those also. Okay. Um, and, right. and, keep, and keep thinking of the word that I used that I made up called inlining. So you're sort of thinking inside out. I need a whole Miriam dictionary. <laughs> made up words <laughs> we can patent that right yeah right and charge for it <laughs> 9.99 you can get the miriam dictionary for art <laughs> how about anyone else i know a lot of you are just watching i'm going to do we have a few minutes left what i'm going to do now i mean i'll finish this one later and maybe post it i'll post this on either my facebook page which is miriam m hughes um or instagram which you can also see on my website because it kind of 
follows through. My website's miriamhughes.com. But I'm gonna do, um, this is actually, what I call this color theory in disguise. And I started doing this because one of the problems I was having when I painted was I was making my colors too faint and I really just wanted to figure out a way to push them. So one day I had this huge piece of paper and um, I just used three colors. I, can, I don't know if I can stick with three colors right now. I'll try it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a red. And I call these my chicken paintings. Now, one day someone brought their son to um, one of my workshops and he's quietly, you know, in a kid's voice, as quiet as he said to his mom, I don't like Nessie's Hughes knows what chickens look like. But anyway, so here's my chicken painting. And this was just being free. Where's that red? There it is. Being free, kind of like letting my, my colors. And again, I want to make sure I use the side of my brush so I get these white spaces. Um, okay, so that's red. I'm going to use sort of a, um, what color yellow I'm going to do? I don't know. This is sort of a beige yellow. I don't have a, oh, there's my yellows. Okay. Let's face this. And see how I'm letting it run down like that? Yeah. And then um, red, yellow, blue. I think I like that blue again. And again, it's running. It's sort of a dark, this is a very dark blue. Um, I'm going to go back to the yellow. <laughs> it's <a> cute. <laughs> like a voodoo doll. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's funny because well, some, sometimes I do call them my voodoo chickens or something, but I'm going to give it some more, <laughs> some more feathering out. And then, of course, the piece de resistance is... This is why the poor kid thought I didn't know what chickens look like. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> and then I do the same thing. I like, I just pen and ink it and um, I have all kinds of names for them. And the thing, like I had one that looked like it was, um, it was, I call it cheerleader, cheerleaders gone bad. Yeah. And then, you know, because I have to break all my rules, then I start adding my other, you know, sort of my other colors. This could almost be a peacock chicken because it's got that. Um, and honest to goodness, these are way, these are just some really fun, simple ways for you to um, just really learn how to work with color. And you can see what works and what doesn't work. Like down here, the green, that green actually turned out pretty nice. I was afraid it was gonna be a little bit too muddy. Um, I, I don't know what I'm doing now. This is, so this is what happens. You just start, when I do so many of these, then I start playing around. Mm -hmm. so there's feathers flying, this chicken's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it's running it's running from something <laughs> and um and then once it dries i give it something i'll give them earrings and i also put the face in afterwards i just draw a little a cute little face <laughs> and voila those are my chicken paintings so um and then as long as we've got like so we have a few minutes um do you want me to go ahead and show you um a quick mountain scene yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's see here. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and draw a border on this one. Pencil. I got find the pencil. Ah. So. And then I'm gonna take my biggest my big brush again, and I'm gonna go. Um, Okay, I'm not quite sure what color I want my mountains to be, but I'll start. And well, another thing in watercolors, they say you want to work from dark to light. No, from light to dark, sorry. sorry. I sometimes, because I tend to go too light in general, mm -hmm. I will sometimes go, I start out really dark. Now I'm going to try to do the Blue Ridge Mountains. So. <laughs> Give that a little bit of, and I'm leaving, if you notice, I'm leaving some white spaces in there. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you, I'll show you, um, 
bit of purple there. This is a combination of Blue Ridge and the Rockies. <laughs> <laughs> I teach a class, I'll be teaching a class, is this online or is this in person? I'll be teaching a class called um, Geography Lessons. And basically it's, it's abstract watercolor. Um, I'm getting in my green. Abstract watercolor using the earth mm -hmm. as um, your inspiration. And um, it's a nice green, I like that green. And what is the class called, Mary? Uh, geography lessons, uh, abstract watercolor using um, the earth as our influence. It's, a, it's um, I think it's just, it's an in-person at 310 Art in Asheville, but I will be teaching it online in the fall. Oh, okay. Um, but it's, um, and it's funny because for years I've been trying to experiment with um, abstract art because, and I've read all these books and everything and all I can think of a lot of the time, I don't want to offend anybody, but I really think it's a lot of BS. <laughs> but, but then when you start really looking, looking at it, um, and here's my sky. Here, I'm gonna, um, UJ use a bigger brush for this, so you have to excuse me while I, Oh, this this thing you see me doing right here, this the scrubbing motion, mm -hmm. not a good idea. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> sometimes you can scrub your paper too much. Um, now, in this case, what I have to do? Oh, I think I might add some. Let me see. Where's my opera red? I think it's in here. I'm gonna have like some poppies down in the bottom, or some mountain laurel. Mountain laurel sort of pinky red. Voila. Now this this particular painting I would probably want to do several times and I want to do several layers. But this is just an example of another one. I don't know if you can see that or not. Oh, that's nice. I like yeah, that. I'll hold, I'll hold it up here too. You see in my mm -hmm. photograph there. Yeah, I like that. Huh. And and these are actually, um, I hate to say this, but these are actually pretty easy to do. Mm -hmm. And if you look on this one, I did the pen and ink here mm -hmm. on the bottom part. Then I used a different kind of a pen. I have metallic blue for the, the water mm -hmm. and a different kind of pen. And then this is just, and then I did this is, um, the moon is also a metallic paint. And then I splattered the sun, the stardust on there. Wait just a minute class, I'll call you right now. Oh, sure, bye. Um, How did you get the white dots and, and the dark blue? Well, I did, what I did is at first I did the dark blue and uh -huh. then I added for the purple while the water was, st while it was still wet and let it kind of run. And then when it was totally dry, I used white wash, which is an opaque paint got it pretty wet, pasty, because you don't want it to be too opaque. Mm -hmm. And then um, I covered this part up with, um, I just taped down some paper. And then I just splattered it with, um, what and I do white. is, I, yeah, I, yeah, there are two ways to do it. One is you can take your brush and just like, you know, splatter, I'm not gonna do it right now, really mm -hmm. hard, but it helps if you hold your brush against, like if you go like, like that. And, oh. thing. Um, and you wanna make sure there's nothing else around and don't wear a white shirt. And just, you know, <laughs> Because <laughs> like, it gets all over everything, but it really, it, you know, it's kind of done. Yeah, yeah. this was this was nice. fun to do. So it was, um, and I have. Let me see if I have any other. Um, like that. Um, yeah. This is this is another one of my geography lessons. Uh -huh. I like to work in, in grids a lot. Wow. Oh. And so these are just like little topographical seemingly like maps yeah i like that um, but i do other bigger ones like that too so there's gonna be a class i'm also offering called working with the grid as a background and unfortunately that work is at the gallery too so i can't show you but um is that actually dollars. geography no 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's my interpretation of geography okay <laughs> now you know what i have done is i have done something like that like i'm from chicago uh -huh. And so I've, I've taken some area, I've looked at some aerial views of the Midwest or Chicago stuff, and I've done some kind of vaguely represented. And if you're from that area, you'll recognize it, but if you're not, you wouldn't. 
<laughs> so I thought I would do a whole series and just kind of look all over the country and just sort of do that and see if you can find your home. Mm -hmm. So um, I really like the um, ink in lining. I, I, I didn't particularly like that because I took a class with the ink and I didn't like it, but see, I did that in mine. I'm, I'm yeah. I like the way it makes it look like a flower. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it makes it makes it look like, and the same thing with the chicken. I mean, it brings it to life in a way that you wouldn't expect. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's so funny because it's just such a simple little technique. And once you get used to the fact that you're not outlining or mm -hmm. redrawing the image, right? And, um, and look at this chicken. This chicken's going to look great. <laughs> 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 but um and then even this one this one this one i'll be excited to i'll try to post these all on my facebook page my facebook page if you want to go to is miriam m hughes miriam and, m and now they can like can give you my contact information and i just post my photographs on there I, I should have a more organized store but i don't um but i have a lot of paintings that i just start like this and then i'll come back later and they're in a pile, and then I finish them up because you have to let things dry. And while they're drying, I'm thinking. So um, I generally have like maybe 10 or 20 things that w in the works at once. Mm -hmm. So, um, which could be good or bad. <laughs> For anyone who's interested, all of Miriam's links are in the chat right now. So her website, her Instagram page, and her Facebook page are all there in the chat if you want to take a look at any of the other awesome stuff that Miriam does. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. Well, I think we're almost up with our hour. How are we doing, Danielle? Yeah, we're good. Um, does anyone have any questions? If not, I'll go ahead and do our wrap up. All right, I'll go ahead and do our wrap up. So thank you everybody who joined us today. Just to let you know, this event has been recorded and will be available on our NAMI Maryland Facebook page after this. Don't forget to join us Thursday, May 20th at noon for Meeting Mindfulness with Kathy Sullivan from Ashes to Art. That's gonna be a really great presentation. Mm -hmm. And for our opening ceremonies and artist showcase on walk day, May 22nd at 11. And you can be one of three lucky participants to earn a shout out during our Saturday live stream, either by registering as a team captain between now and Saturday, be the team captain with the most team members by Saturday, or be the participant who raises the most between Monday, May 17th at midnight on Friday, May 21st. Hmm. However you decide to participate on the 22nd, be sure to share on social media and tag us at NAMI Maryland and use the hashtags hashtag creativity connects and hashtag not alone. So thank you again to Miriam for this wonderful paint. You're welcome. Um, thank you. Thank you. Great. Yeah, Have a great you rest of your day, everybody. Okay. Thank great. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.